Hello everyone, it's Britmaster here, and today I have a LEGO Lord of the Rings set to review. This is the 9476 Orc Forge from 2012. This set comes with 363 pieces, was rated for ages 8 to 14, and cost you $40 back when it was in stores. So this set depicts the scenes in the pits of Isengard, or the caverns of Isengard, if you will, um, where the orcs are, of course, building weapons, and uh, they're... Urukai being birthed in the in the mud, which is a pretty disgusting scene in the Lord of the Rings films. But yeah, this is where it all happens. This is what Saruman did in Isengard. This is this is the forge itself. So yeah, let's look at the minifigures to be the first part of the review. Right, so here are the minifigures that come in the set. There are a total of four, and they're all either orcs or Urukai. So. The first one here is Lurtz. He's the only one who has a name. Uh, in the films, he's the... Okay, move the light. There you go. In the films, he's the character who is the leader of the Urukai, the Fellowship of the Ring, at least. And he's the character who kills Boromir, one of the nine companions who set out for Rivendell to help destroy the Ring. And he does have a pretty long duel with Aragorn, who is, of course, one of the other characters in The Lord of the Rings, one of the main characters, him and Frodo, I'd say. But this is what he looks like. You can see he's almost naked except for around, uh, except right around his belt area. Overall, he has some printing where you can see his chest muscles and such. Um, there is back printing as well. You can see that he has the white hand of Saruman on his face, and he does have very long hair, and this is what he was just, he emerged from the uh, the mud which they, the uruk come out from in the film. So, that's what he looks like. Here is a regular uruk soldier. He does have the white hand of Saruman on his shield and on his helmet, which makes him slightly more rare than some of the other uruk minifigures. I know that the, um, the, the Tower of Orthanc, which is also in Isengard, has an uruk minifigure that also has the White Hand of Saruman on his helmet and shield. Of course, he has a really nice uruk sword, a really nice shield, two special molds that were designed for these minifigures, the helmet as well. It's nice armor. He does have printing on his legs and on his torso, but I won't take it off. I'll show you the helmet. I'll take off the helmet, though, to show you the face. That's what the the face looks like. Pretty nice. It says the white hand of Saruman on it. Here is the orc pit master. He's the one who helps dig out the uruk -hai. And he has a shovel, of course, to remove some of the mud and dirt. Pretty interesting looking head, torso. It's very, very common for orc minifigures. Nothing really too special, but of course, since they are orcs, it's always good to have many of them. And here's the orc smith who crafts the weapons for the uruk -hai. He has a hammer right there. He does have an anvil, which I'll be showing you later on. This orc does have the ears and hair, so you know, just to provide a little bit of uh, individual uh, looks for the orcs. They don't all look the same, but yeah, I have to say they're all nice minifigures. Uh, besides Lortz, who's the only one who is, you know, only one who is a, re a real character. All the other ones, it's always great to have more of them so you can create bigger armies. So now I'll show you the anvil and some of the other things that are smaller in the set. All right, so this is the place where the weapons are crafted. So here, of course, is where you can build a suit of armor, which is pretty nice. You could take it off pretty easily. Of course, you could fit it on an uruk -hai once you're done. And this is where you could uh, create swords. So you can see there's supposed to be a little bit of uh, uh, liquid metal in there. Of course, it's extremely hot. But yeah, those are little things that go with the orc forge. All right, so here's the main part of the orc forge. I'll set my camera down because there are quite a few features that are in this. So the first one is quite well hidden. 
Uh, you could actually birth one of the uh, urukai from the mud from the earth, which is pretty interesting. Um, so you could lift this rock piece up a little bit, just so it's loose, and from the back you could push the legs of Lurts or one of the other urukai, so it could emerge from the ground, and that's what it looks like. It's a pretty interesting feature, very simple, nothing too um, elaborate. Personally, I wish that they didn't include these two studs on there. I wish it were just completely flat uh, tile pieces, so it would be easier just to push out without there being any gap or anything. So, overall, I think it's a pretty good function. Um, it's pretty simple, pretty nice, but of course, there you have the Urukai. Another feature here, of course, is that there is one of the large wheels that I think is powered by water. I think water would, um, actually, no, it wouldn't be water. That, never mind, sorry. But this would turn, and what you'd be able to do is you could send down a hook to pick up right here you can see there is a little, uh, little half of a barrel I guess or some sort of basket and it does have little pieces of metal in it that were mined from the farthest pits of Isengard and of course you can spin to show you a little bit better can spin a knob back here which would raise the basket up further and then you can take the basket put it along here of course you'll raise the, the hook even higher and then what you can do is you could pour out the little contents from the basket onto this uh, ramp of course, you'll put the basket here, and you can let the pieces of metal run along the little ramp and into a cauldron. And from the cauldron, you can transport well, you could transport the cauldron onto here, which is almost like a a heat pit. And of course, there you can see that there's fire, and there's a nice function as well where they included a light brick. So if you push the light brick piece, uh, it'll light up. Let me bring the camera a little bit closer you so you can see it a bit better. And it does light up. Probably isn't, doesn't pick it up as well with the light, so I'll turn off the light. And uh, you can see it there. If you let your, um, your finger touch it really lightly and you turn it on, it'll look like it's flickering, which is what I really like because of course, flames of fire are not constantly at the same level of brightness, so I think that's a nice look. Of course, I'll turn on the light again. So overall, that's those are the main features of the Orc Forge, so yeah, that's basically it for this set. Alright, so for my overall thoughts on the set, I definitely do think it's a must-have for any Lord of the Rings fan. This is one of the last boxed sets that I need to collect. I just need one more, which is Gandalf Arrives. Then it's just some polybacks, and then my Lord of the Rings collection is complete. I'm really excited about that. I want to get all of the Middle-Earth sets that I don't have by the end of the year. Hopefully by the end of the summer. But, yeah, it's my mission right now. But overall, it's a great set. It is extremely expensive if you want to get it now. Most sellers are wanting over 150 sometimes more for it. I got this for around $85. It's not worth $85, but as a big Lord of the Rings fan, I I just paid for it. It was a bit painful, but uh, it, it was worth it. I, I want to complete the series. So if you're a big Lord of the Rings fan, you're going to buy it, but if you're just casually wanting a set that looks nice, maybe save for something else, but I can't tell you not to buy a Lord of the Rings set, so. Alright, that's it for this video, and I'll see y'all later. Bye.